Ah, dear viewers, gather around and prepare yourselves for a tale that will undoubtedly send shivers down your spines and make your blood run cold. Today we delve into the sinister story of Ahmad Siraji, a name that resonates with the echoes of pure malevolence. Born in 1949 in Madan, North Sumatra, Ahmad Siraji, also known as Nasib Kalavang, is a figure who has carved his place in the annals of horror, not for any single gruesome act, but for a series of calculated, ritualistic murders that spanned over a decade. Siraji was a humble cattle breeder by trade, but beneath this unassuming exterior lay a mind consumed by dark desires and a chilling ambition. His descent into infamy began, as many such stories do, with a dream. One night, Siraji claimed to have been visited by the spirit of his deceased father, who imparted a grotesque command. To achieve supernatural powers, Siraji must murder 70 women and drink their saliva. It was a vision that would propel him down a path of unimaginable horror. Ahmad Siraji was not merely a cold-blooded killer. He was a self-proclaimed Dukan, or shaman. In the communities of North Sumatra, Dukans hold a significant place, often seen as spiritual healers and intermediaries between the mortal world and the realm of the spirits. Siraji exploited this revered position to lure his victims, promising them wealth, beauty, and fortune through his mystical abilities. It was under this guise that many unsuspecting women, driven by desperation or ambition, sought his services, only to meet their tragic end. The methodical nature of Siraji's crimes is particularly unsetting. He selected his victims with meticulous care, ensuring they were all women who came to him voluntarily. This gave him a veneer of innocence and helped him avoid suspicion for many years. Once a victim was ensnared, Siraji would take her to a secluded sugarcane field near his home. Here, in the dead of night, he would bury her waist deep in the earth, rendering her immobile and helpless. With his victim trapped and vulnerable, Siraji would proceed to strangle her with a cable, watching as the light drained from her eyes. It was at this point, according to his own grotesque admission, that he would collect her saliva, which he believed held the key to his supernatural quest. Each murder was a step closer to the 70 required to fill his father's spectral command. Yet, it was not merely the act of killing that solidified Siraji's place among history's most depraved criminals. It was the ritualistic, post-mortem practices he performed. After the women took their final breath, Siraji would carefully unearth their bodies, washing them in a macabre purification ritual. He would then rebury them, positioning their heads towards his house, believing this alignment would further empower him. For 11 years, Ahmad Zaraji continued his gruesome mission, his body count steadily rising. It is estimated that he murdered at least 42 women, though some believe the true number may be much higher. The sugarcane fields, silent witnesses to his atrocities, became a graveyard where the spirits of his victims lingered, crying out for justice. Justice, however, would not be swift. It was only in 1997 that Siraji's reign of terror came to an end. His downfall of terror came to an end. His downfall began with the disappearance of 21-year-old Sri Kamala Dewey. Her family, frantic with worry, reported her missing, prompting a police investigation. Dewey's friends revealed that she had last been seen in the company of Ahmad Siraji seeking his services as a Dukan. With suspicions mounting, the police searched Siraji's property, uncovering a gruesome trove of evidence. Bodies were exhumed from the sugarcane fields, each a testament to his heinous deeds. Siraji was arrested, and under interrogation, he confessed to his crimes with a chilling lack of remorse. 
he detailed his methods and motivations, his voice devoid of empathy or regret. Sriracha's trial was a spectacle, drawing immense media attention and horrified fascination from the public. He was convicted of 42 murders and sentenced to death by firing squad. His three wives, one of whom was his accomplice, were also tried and received varying sentences for their roles in the atrocities. In 2008, after more than a decade on death row, Ahmad Siraji was executed, his life ending in a manner befitting his crimes, swift and without ceremony. Yet the shadow of his actions continues to linger, a grim reminder of the depths of human depravity and the terrifying power of belief. Siraji's story raises unsettling questions about the nature of evil and the influence of superstition. How could a man, ostensibly driven by spiritual guidance, commit such unspeakable acts? What dark alchemy transforms belief into a justification for murder? These are the questions that haunt the legacy of Ahmad Siraji, challenging our understanding of morality and the human psyche. In the end, the tale of Ahmad Siraji is a cautionary one. It reminds us of the dangers that lie in blind faith and the seductive allure of power, no matter how it is promised. It warns of the predators who walk among us, cloaked in the guise of healers and sages, preying on the vulnerable and the desperate. As we reflect on this dark chapter of history, let us remember the victims, those women who sought hope and found only horror. Their stories, though overshadowed by the monstrous acts of Ahmad Siraji, deserve to be told and remembered. They are the true martyrs of this tale, their lives cut short by a man whose quest for power led him down a path of unimaginable evil. And so, dear viewers, as you turn off the lights and settle into the comfort of your homes, take a moment to ponder the thin veil that separates the ordinary from the extraordinary, the sane from the insane, for in the shadows where the light barely reaches, the echoes of Ahmad Siraji's deeds still whisper, a chilling reminder that horror is not always confined to the realm of fiction.